morning everybody. Welcome back to uh, 78. So, at the end of the last video, I actually just pulled that bow off. Um, and um, it's a semi-success. Um, it's actually letting go. That one corner we were actually lit the clamps off the other day and it sprung out. Um, I think what it's done is it's let the uh, glue go and it hasn't, now it hasn't re-glued, if you know what I mean. Because we let it come out and then it's like, it started separating and we pulled it back in. But possibly what we should have done when we had it out was screwed it some more. Well, if we had some of this, which we've just bought, um, to do the next one, hopefully get a better result. Probably if, what I might do with that is uh, put a, just a, a light ratchet strap between it and pull it in and pour some of that down in the joints where it's actually let go and see if it holds because we might use it for the front, very front bow because it's the right width and because the other ones are actually a little bit wider. Um, I thought it might have been a little short um, in the pieces that come out but I think it's going to be okay. I think it would be okay if we can use that because I need to make the other ones wider um, for the for the back three. They need to be about you know an inch wider at each side to the type of thing or thereabouts. Um, so yeah, because I was thinking that we might just do them all at 1500 because that's how wide the front one is but I've had a measure up and it's going to be too narrow so we'll just do the we'll make that one the front one or we'll make it if that doesn't work and we'll make the other ones that inch wider each side. Um, so yeah. But yeah, what I'm going to do because that's starting to open up I'll show you. I actually showed it at the end of the last video, but it's, it's creaking and cracking all the time. So it needs pulled back around square, and if we do that, it'll actually hold itself together. And um, it might re glue if I put a ratchet strap between that and here, between the other end and here. So it seems to be right at that end. It's just this is the end that we let go to have a look. And it's, you know, let the glue go, but if I screw a heap of glue in those open areas, and then squish it back round. Hopefully, it might be enough to hold it. And then, by the time it's actually physically in the car, and all that sort of stuff, um, there's nothing actually tying it together here and here, so it needs to hold. Um, but if it doesn't work, we can just glue it and let it, leave it for a few days in the corner, and um, we'll make the other ones. And if we let it go and it pulls apart like that again, we'll just make another one. That's all we can do. So I think I'll do that now. I'll go find that ratchet trap because I'll use the one that I used to move that diff in the motor and just tighten it in here and tighten it up till it's got quite a nice pull on it. Maybe even over pull it a little and um, see if we can get it to glue back together. And um, yeah, and then at some point then we can trim it up and shape it and whatever. Um, so yeah. This will eventually have another piece of timber added in here because it's on the front and it sits out. But that's not critical. We can do that. We can glue that on afterwards. Um, it's just, you see, probably easy to make all the bows the same way. And then this one here, we can add the piece on it for where it sits on the windscreen or clips onto the windscreen because this is one that's got to have the blocks onto it. So. But yeah, I think we'll get that sorted and uh, get on with it. <laughs> right, let's turn the heat on because it's so bloody cold. I'll put some glue in there because it's actually really starting to straighten out now and I'll hopefully it'll hold once we glue it and let it dry for a few days.
pull up for a minute. Now it's on four inch and that's the one that sticks big. Come back to you in a minute, I'll get the glue dry and see if we can get it to run in there nicely. I meant to get the glue warmed up, not dry. <laughs> but while I'm waiting on that to get a bit runnier, I'm going to widen this um, thing out. So yeah, if, if this doesn't work after a few days and we get some glue in there and we let it set, I can just move those pieces back in and yeah, we can make another one. We'll just call that experiment number one, and that glue didn't work. <laughs> but yeah, I'll widen it out and I'll come back to you. Alright, I've got the glue running down there. This is a second lot I put on top just to get it to obviously go down and as far as possible. So when I squeeze it up, it spreads out nicely in there and really glues it together. Hopefully, we'll get a result out of it. Uh, but if it fails, it fails. I, I don't. I think it should glue up. But yeah, we'll just. I'll pull it up nice and tight. Like the other end doesn't let go at all. So I think it's. Well, you yeah, don't think it has, nah. I bet you get a bit of a gap there. Actually, you might put some sawdust down in there with some glue. Maybe mix up some stuff and poke it down in there. But uh, while we're at it, but I think if I pulled it up nice and tight, it should be fine. And just let it cure up and then we can try and clean it up later on. But yeah, I'll sleep for a couple of days in the corner, let it set and um, see what happens. And then we'll just make these other ones. Um, I will possibly have to extend this up higher too for the uh, big wide one, because it's 75 mils wide. I probably will have to pull it up because um, at the end of the day, like you don't want to be squeezing all the rest in and then all of a sudden it's trying to spread out at the top a little bit. It might be alright, I don't know, but we'll just see if we need to add some extra um, water at the top of the form because it's deeper. Um, and we're talking this much deeper, so I don't know. It might just pull fine around there, but it might not. I just I don't want to risk you know, going queer. But yeah, I'll squeeze this together shortly. I've got a bit of sawdust that I might mix up and just in this gap where there's a, obviously a piece was missing um, just to you know, fill it in not that it's probably seen anyway but just to maybe help make it look a bit prettier but we can do that later on too if we have to if this is successful so yeah anyway we'll carry on
So I'm just going to have a crack at making the shortest tape as cheap. It's quite a lot shorter than the other one. So I'll um, mark the cut points and put some tape along it. I think I'll just, I think I'll still have to cut it down through here and then cut the piece off so I can squeeze it up nicely. But because it's so much shorter, it's going to be, it's going to be interesting to see how it reacts. But anyway, we'll come back to you shortly. It is going to work okay, but uh, it takes a wee bit of squeezing in there. I'll have to make it a bit rounder at the end, obviously. Give it a bit of finesse, try and get it to close up a bit nicer. But that's it so far. So we'll work at that short. Righty, so I've got this one started. It goes in here, and then obviously it's going to have a bit of a bar in the bottom. Um, and then obviously the... Uh, wooden bow after that. Um, so that's the shortest one. Um, got the next bow started for the uh, roof. Um, it's slightly wider than the other one because uh, it needs to be obviously a little bit wider. Like I said that's that other one over here sitting in the corner with a, well, against the wall with a ratchet strap on it holding some tension on that. We've got a little bit over pulled Hopefully that'll keep that nice and closed up and that'll glue itself together. So yeah, it's just a matter of keep going and get these bits made. Alrighty guys, so i got four of these taper tubes now um, made. Um, to this point anyway, and I've got three more cuts. I've got um, one more slightly longer, and this is only a little bit longer. Um, so I've got two of those, two of the slightly longer ones cut. Um, and one of those, I've still got to cut one more of those, but basically it's the two very back ones. Um, the one that's slightly longer than this is this one in here, because it only comes to about here. Um, and obviously it doesn't need to go right to this point because we've got the bar that goes in it that we make the uh, joint out of. The, the shortest one's this one, and then that's one that's a reasonable length but not as long as those is the one that comes in here because it's got quite a lot of steel bar hanging out here um, and then yeah it comes up to wherever it is here somewhere so that's what I've been doing for the last few while here so it's in here take a slightly forward of that and then back to about here somewhere I made it a little bit longer I think um, I'll, I could have cut a little bit off it, but well, you'd slip it slightly long, we can adjust that if need be. Because um, I just left it a little bit long, because hopefully we can use this one for the front, and um, then obviously the other ones for the back. So you've still got, I've got the uh, wide stuff over here cut down. I've got to cut a, a few more strips just to make up enough numbers for that, because I need nine layers thick to make these pieces um, so it's yeah, nine layers in that that four mil thick um, so yeah so I need to cut another cut a few more strips for that back one I could um, you know I need to anyway because it's going to be trimmed down and obviously it might be 100% long enough so we might need a little bit extra one way or the other to you know do the joins um, unfortunately it's just the nature of the beast um, it'd be nice to have some really, really long stuff, but it would be extremely awkward to cut down too because it would be getting fairly hanging out here and it would probably break off or something stupid. But as long as we keep the joints sort of towards that middle section and they're overlapping, it, it shouldn't be any any problems. And by the time it's all cleaned up and smoothed out and then it's going to be covered in fabric, so you never see any of the joints and as long as it doesn't come apart there, we'll be fine. Um, you know, and we can put a bit of uh, wood putty in the, any joints that happen to be looking a bit bad or odd that you can see before we put it together. Um, I can also probably mix up a bit of that wood glue with some sawdust off this stuff too. You now and just mould it in and let it cure and then sand it off type sort of thing. So there's all those little tricks we can do to make it better. Um, so yeah. That's about where we're at at the moment. So I've only just got to cut one more short piece out of this piece. And then I've got to, still got a whole length left. So if we do happen to find that we need to 
modifier or alter some of the shorter ones we should be okay now we've got plenty left to make some extras if need be um, but yeah hopefully we don't need to do any sort of stuff so that's from at the moment this looks like it's curing up pretty well it's starting to the glue's starting to gum up quite nicely on um, the stuff that's just sitting on top so yeah actually talking about mixing a bit of uh, what do you call it, sawdust and glue together. I did that actually earlier to fill up a couple of little funny little gaps and just smeared it in there just to see what it did. A little bit here, that sort of thing. So hopefully it should be good, but yeah, we should be able to, um, hopefully in the morning, um, or um, yeah, what I might do is I might leave it till last thing tomorrow and take it out and have everything ready to put another one in. Um, I'll have to do a dry fit, obviously, laying the pieces out, work out all my overlaps. That's what I did this morning before I turned the camera on and then glued it up and put it on there. So I do a dry fit, just lay them down here between the marks, make sure I've got enough material, work out any small pieces from the fillings, and uh, yeah, and then obviously glue it together and bend it around them clamp it up so yeah so yeah we'll, hopefully yeah I'm, what I might do is yeah after lunch tomorrow sort of about now which is about half past two three o'clock I'll pull this one off that'll give it a, it's at about a 24 so you're gonna give it um, about 30 odd ads I guess to, to glue up and we'll check We'll see what it's doing. We'll obviously, see what the glue's doing first, and then maybe undo a clamp and just see what it does. And um, yeah, if it looks okay, we'll pull it off. If it doesn't look okay, we'll leave it on there until tomorrow morning or the next morning. It says 24 to 48 hours on that glue on that bottle to cure. So yeah, that's better than seven days. So. If we have to leave it two days, that's okay. I don't mind that, but yeah. But that was three, but yeah. You know, we'll check it tomorrow morning, have a look, and then yeah, probably pull it off about midday and then set another one up. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see in the morning. I think, yeah. We'll soon tell tomorrow morning whether it looks like it's going to be okay and then we can sort of we'll pull it off then or about lunchtime or a bit after and then set another one up. I got, you know, I got these tubes to play with, and once I got them sorted out, and um, then I might actually, I send, need to send Dave message in uh, Australia, and I just, what I want to do is I want to find out what size spanner fits over that nut, because then I can look for a uh, a nut and bolt that's that same size. And that'll give me the rough idea of what the bolt is, size that goes through here, and then we'll make the bracket up, fit on here, and I'll draw the body hole through here. So when we go to fit these things on, I've got, then I can actually put them direct onto the body, and we can test that side of it, and then I don't have to worry about clamping these uh, silly brackets or anything on, just in case this hole's way too big. Um, I'd imagine it's probably, I don't know, like a half inch, something like that. That's uh, 5 8, I think it is, whatever it is. So, yeah, I can imagine it's probably 9 16 or, four, or half inch or something coming through there. Yeah, so if I find out yeah, what size the nut is, because it's got a nice big chrome nut on it, um, I don't know what size it is, but you know, I can imagine it's probably like a 7, uh, not a 7 16, or like 11 16 or a maybe 3 quarter um, spanner to put on it. So if I can find that out, maybe tonight, then I can organise a couple of bolts with maybe a, uh, even if it's just a couple of bolts, and then I can worry about a, a, a nice chrome nut after that, or, um, or you're not, not so much chrome, but nickeled bolt. I'm actually thinking about maybe, um, <clears throat> see if we can, I've seen a few guys do plating 
um, actually bad obsession motorsport which they got this, car, this thing called Project Binky which is a mini with a GT Celica 4 running gear in it um, they're getting really close to finishing this car um, I've been building it for about seven years but I know they they plated some stuff and I, I have seen by other people like nickel plate and chrome and uh, not chrome plate but copper plate and nickel plate parts um, I wonder if we could I don't know it yeah, should be interesting to see if we can even if we could copper plate because then I could actually copper plate the crap out of that grill shell to get rid of any um, pitting in it, out of it and obviously sand it back and polish it back you know what I mean before we do get it nickel plated um, so that's a possibility and then I can also plate some of the hardware on here um, just so it's not on that rusty because all this stuff's been sandblasted it possibly needs like a um, some sort of plating it'd be actually interesting to find out what a lot of this hardware and bits and brackets were either plated or painted um, but like the bolts and stuff like that you know like there is hardware on here that needs to be probably plated or painted of some description you know so that would be interesting to find out just because then maybe we could we could dabble with a little bit of that too um, for some of the bits and pieces that we're going to be doing because yeah like there's a brackets right at the back they will be nickel plated I would imagine so I've got to make them so that's something too like I could you know I could copper plate the crap out of them until we get them really nice and smooth and then nickel plate them ourselves it's worth a try um, something I've never done before but um, I've seen a few videos on it and you know, it's probably one of those things that's worth trying anyway I'll carry on here making some more tapered tubes and um, yeah and after that I'll come back to you if I get a couple more made but otherwise it'll probably be maybe tomorrow morning and we'll have another look at this Alright guys, that's later on. It's alrighty guys, so I've had a bit of a play with this thing, I'm giving it a bit of a clean up. Um, I've actually just mixed up a bit of uh, sawdust and uh, wood glue uh, and just put it in some of the pieces where it's not quite so even and there's the odd little, uh, where the, some of the joins aren't, uh, you know, where they get a little bit of a gap just to try and stop moisture and whatever you get in and just obviously help blend things in a little bit nicer. Um, so I've, I've just given it a rough sand up and I've um, I run over it with a plane obviously and just knocked the worst the unevenness off yet obviously we've got to wait for that to glue up hard um, and you know there's a lot of, lot of plane but yeah I just, just roughly went over it just knocked the worst the crap off both sides I'll probably do this both sides just to help fill up any the worst discrepancies if you know what I mean and um, at least that's because it's the same timber that's the thing mixed up it'll blend in pretty good um, and you never yeah, it's actually not seen anyway so it doesn't really matter but just for just so it's, it looks a bit nicer when it's a part sort of type thing um, yeah so I'll get that we'll get the edges rounded off for noise and stuff over the next few days hopefully this glues up properly then I can we can trim the excess and and uh, I can obviously make up the other pieces that will go in here, um, things like that, um, and then obviously make up the finish making the pieces that go over here, and then we can start piecing this back together. Um, I've just seen a video to uh, go on Australia to find out what size the, the head is on the nut, and then I can get a, an appropriate bolt and nut and whatever. And make these brackets so we can at least when I start getting these tubes and stuff a bit closer and I've got the bows made I can start piecing it back together with these other old crappy linkages until we 
get it all dialed in and all the final pieces made. But at least with these, I can see what's working and what's not, just in case, because of the, obviously the width difference. You know, there's a thickness difference now, so it'll, it'll let us know, and also, also I can see um, when I'm slipping stuff together where I need to possibly um, lift or drop a bow a little bit in the tube type sort of thing. You now we'll get it so it's a little bit high for a start-off and we can sit back look at it and then we need to see whether we want to drop a little bit more or, or whatever when we lock everything in um, and obviously hold it in and all that sort of stuff, hold the bits in. Um, yeah, so that's about where we're at at the moment. So, yeah, I'm not sure how this video will be going. I'll do a bit more of an idea tomorrow morning. So there might be some more to this video, or we might not. Um, I still haven't... I think I've made... Oh, I'm not sure if I've given you an update since I've finished. I made a, another tube, I think. So we've got one of each length here now. Um, yeah, got one of each length here. Just got a short, the short, the next shortest, which is only a little bit longer, and then the other two. And this one, I got <laughs> bored of just welding, <laughs> playing with those, so that's why I started cleaning this up, just to break it up, you know what I mean? So then I can, tomorrow morning, I'll go back to, uh, if we're not setting another bow up, um, if we want to let that a little, little bit longer, then I can go back to welding some more tubes up, and then I'll obviously start working out the bracketry to start holding the bits together and things like that. So yeah, there's lots of plenty to do, and, um, for a start up, I think I'll just use the bolts that I've got here to hold it together and then we'll work out the final solution, whether it's rivet riveting or whatever. You know, I think that's how that would have been held together. Whether it's rivets, you know, it might be rivets through these points, if you know what I mean. Um, so yeah, we need to work out those final details. But yeah. That's coming together nicely. That looks like it's gumming up. It's quite nice. Um, I, th I think I told you I put a little bit of that mixture in there too a wee while ago. Made some up and just put a, a bit in some of the, the bigger holes. Hopefully that glue's better than that stuff. Um, I might need to put it on a little thicker, maybe. Just not spread it out quite so much. We'll see. Hopefully that's up because I just noticed there's an odd spot on that still even on the good side where it, it just didn't have enough probably glue in, in there to take up the odd gap if you know what I mean and it's sort of stuck the glue would have been on one side but it's not 100% touching the other one which has been pulled around and probably slightly sprung but uh, it should be good now we might just have to put it a little bit extra in there so it's got a bit more a bit more there to, to fill the gap if you know what I mean that off because I'm about to bugger off so yeah that'll do um, I'll go home and we'll either see you in the next video or tomorrow <laughs> cheers guys see ya morning guys so um, welcome back to uh, Tuesday <laughs> um, so I've just had a wee look at the uh, glue on that the bow that I've set up yesterday it looks like it's fairly cured um, I might still leave it till a little bit later on, um, but the one that I re-glued that corner, I'll, I'll have a look at that, see if that's held. Because um, it does look like it's fairly glued up, if you know what I mean. Um, even the stuff that I put on here with a bit of uh, sawdust in it, looks like it's fairly glued up and dried. Um, so yeah, I'll have a look at that corner, see how that's going, see if it holds. Um, at least then I'll have a bit more of an idea whether that's cured or not. So if this holds, we should be able to pull that one because we put that together uh, within half an hour of doing this corner on here. So, yeah, I'll turn it, I'll just turn the camera around here and um, just sort of show you what we've got going on. Mm -hmm. Whenever we look here, Take it out of the water. It's easy. So we let it go off the 
boss. Pressure guy. Um, it looks like it's going to hold. We'll see and find out. Yeah, it looks like it's going to hold anyway. So and see. So it starts creaking and cracking like it did yesterday. We know we've got an issue. Um, but yeah, it looks like it's going to hold. I guess we'll just leave it for half an hour or so and just see what's going on. I can see in here the, uh, I can see actually see through here, so obviously the glue's dried up a bit in that layer, so we might have to put some more in there. Um, it just hasn't obviously pulled together enough. Maybe the rest of it might be strong enough to hold it and we can just dribble some more in there and, and hopefully it stays. I'll let this little clamp go because it was just holding down an extra piece there that I was worried that we were worried about. So you look like that helps. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. It's, it, it's, it has held, but I think there's a couple of issues where it's just Obviously, when it let go that first time, it's just, it's, it hasn't been quite enough to uh, sort of hold it in position. You know what I mean? It probably needs this clamp, you know, some glue put in there and then just a clamp on there or something like that. Just to help hold it, it probably needs a couple or something like that. And one around here just to help hold that. But I think it should be alright, eh? I think with a little bit of perseverance, we'll get it tidied up. Um, so yeah, I'll leave that. I'll just leave it off. Let it happen. You see, I might uh, put it in the vice and maybe just shave the, the ugly stuff off it and um, trim it up. We'll have a wee measure up and have a trim up. I might even um, see if I can find some slivers and poke in here and glue them in to make it a little bit longer. Where we sort of had the uh, we thought we were going to use it a little bit shorter, but if I might better get a couple of sticks and just some of these pieces where it hasn't had got there. We don't only need three little pieces in that end. And um, like we only need a couple of little pieces in here too. The rest of that we'll just trim off. Apart from that, like it's full length. It's just a few little pieces. So that'll give it a little bit extra because it was only meant to be sort of that long. But if we can grain that little bit, that'll help with the top. Um, because it'll be going into the tube about there anyway. Or you know, about here, somewhere. If it'll get that much in it. So that'll give us a nice amount in there. And it's going to be shaved down anyway, so I think that'll work. I think we'll be right. As long as we can get it to look a little bit nicer, we'll make it look better. It is going to be covered by fabric and all that sort of stuff, so you're not going to see a lot of that, but if we can get it just so these pieces are solid, you can see that. Let's see it better on the side. So that piece there hasn't, like it just, it obviously didn't have enough. We've got to squeeze, might even um, mix up a bit more of the, uh, what do you call it, <coughs> sawdust and that glue. And we'll put some glue in there first and then put some sawdust and glue in behind it to try and sort of fill that gap up to make it a bit more solid. Same in the other places and then put a couple clamps on it, but we might do that near once we've got the other ones made, just so we can uh, yeah, put three or four of those clamps on there and just really squeeze it up, just to improve that situation. How the ring looks alright. Just needs a little bit of putty on there. It's got a little one little spot where it possibly just didn't have enough glue in places originally, maybe, that liquid nail stuff. I think it probably would work, but I think that stuff's going to work fine too, so it's probably a little bit easier to get it even, like the heights even, because it's sort of, it's so, so gooey that it's very hard to move around when you're sort of pulling it all together. That's cool. I'll give it a bit of a shave down, put the device and run the plane across it and clean it up a little bit, and uh, at some point we'll dial it in. I think it's going to hold. We'll soon know by the end of the day where it sprung open anymore or not.
I'm going to be right. I might have pulled a little bit back, but no, it's happening up here too. We might, be, we might be better off just to make another one, I think. And get it first set here because it's going to open. Yeah. yeah, it's not going to hold. Unfortunately. Yeah. If I put pressure on that, it's just opening. I'm going to put the other ends like. Yeah, actually. It's not working very well at all, is it? It's alright when it's that way. But I just, yeah, I don't hate to see some pressure go on it and it not work that way. It's always wasn't a bad idea to do that. Yeah, that's. Mmm. That mightn't be the best glue. Like it should be under tension all the time with being in the roof and stuff, but yeah, I hope that other one works better than that. We'll find out. Because it should be fairly well glued up. But yeah. We're pulling up on that. It should have held better than that. Shouldn't have been able to pull that part up. Oh. Yeah, right. <laughs> Let's have a look at this other one. Um, have a bit of a decent look here. Now I'm concerned. So I don't want to do that. It looks like it's fairly set. Like any residue that's left around it is. And it is hard, like it's quite hard. We'll have a decent look, just see if there's any there's a couple little spots that look like, you know, the glue hasn't quite, like some thicker bits hasn't quite gone off. Borderline, do you know what I mean? Just hope this is glued to give it properly. And actually glued, glued. Um, yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully. Be interesting. Anyway. So yeah. That was a bit of a, a bit of a fizz. Yeah, I didn't actually pull on it back the other way just to see whether it, you know, whether it was rigid enough, you know, and held. Um, yesterday, I didn't really sort of think about it, but I was like, yeah, I just sort of thought, oh, we'll just pull on that other end to see if it held, and it didn't really. And I thought, oh, we'll have to check the other end, and yeah, it didn't really either. So, yeah, it mightn't have been the best glue to use. Um, so, Lee, at least I know... Like I'd yeah, hate to have the top up and then it like it flex one way or the other and then all of a sudden you crack crack crack, crack and, that, and it's yeah it loses all its strength. Um, it should glue together and and want to stick like it should bust apart like it should actually break the wood not pull the glue apart. So yeah, hopefully this idea works then. It should, like laminating it around like that, should work. Um, a lot of people have done, it, done stuff that way, but I just hope it, yeah, it will hold um, under the conditions, if you know what I mean. It's not the fine day I'm worried about. It's the, it's the day that was fine that turns into a blustery day and they're trying to keep themselves protected and it doesn't hold. Anyway, we'll get back to you shortly.